Alright, welcome to Fixing with Friends. I'm your host, that guy you know. As you can see, I'm surrounded by friends. Alright, so, in this episode of Fixing with Friends, we're going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to do your oil change. Then we're going to chat about how to dispose of fluids properly, and do a brief overview on how to check your other fluids. In the description below, you'll find uh, the timestamps for each of those sections, if you want, just for your convenience. Maybe I've overlaid them, I don't know. And if you see something we've done wrong, please let us know in the comments. Alright, so uh, today we're going to be helping out Danish. We're going to start out easy and just do an oil change. For a Dodge Avenger 2009 FXT model. Alright. So let's get that started. Now before you say anything, I know this shirt is terrible. It was a gift, so I'm going to keep it. Um, first step in changing the oil, if you haven't done it before, by some chance. Um, jacking up the car, sometimes you can sneak under, which is really nice, but in this case, it's not. First thing is, damage is going to Set the jack stand under you know, a suitable jacking point and then we'll get to changing the oil. We're just going to take a second to discuss properly positioning the jack stands. We couldn't show you until it was up for obvious reasons. Uh, so what was your question? Uh, what, where exactly would I put it? Okay, so when you're, when you're using the jack stands, you want to make sure that there's enough space for the jack stand as well. But um, there's a couple of like hard points under the car. You don't want to just put it under like a random bit of pan. Like this guy right here? Yeah, so I'll show you right now. Usually your jacking points are listed in your manual. These days, you never know. So, I'll just show you a couple more solid points. Alright, so there's this nice solid beam where all the other frame is mounted to. Um, and this is a decent jacking point, or if not, we'll find out. But it's double thick with like quarter inch steel, so yeah, it's going to be just fine. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and lower it down. We're just going to repeat the same process that we did on the right hand side. And now we're just going to check and make sure that the car is sturdy before getting under it. It's not moving at all, which is nice. And I'm not that big. This is... Yeah, that's definitely good. Okay. We're just going to open the filler cap so that once it's draining, it doesn't glug. It'll just come out smoothly. And we're going to pop this up just a touch for later. I'll explain why, perhaps. <laughs> So this is where the oil filter is on this car, and the pan drain for the oil is just there. The drain plug, I should say. Alright, so when I was looking at this, I was thinking it was a um, special bolt, but looking at it closer, it's just very, very rounded. So we're probably going to go replace that now so it doesn't get stuck on there permanently. Just a second. And then you can probably, yeah, probably now. Hopefully pull it off. If not, just push in the button on the end of the this guy? ratchet, yeah, and pull it. And oh. then just use your fingers. Okay. Just because it's rounded and it's stuck on, we can pull it off later. Yeah, make sure the bucket or pan is underneath. There we go. Nicely done. That's a good aim. 
So yeah. usually what I do is I slide it um, so that the stream is landing just to the end of the bucket. Oh, so okay. as it, as it um, drains, uh, drains, it's yeah. not going to dribble everywhere. All right, okay. Now I can get out, probably. Yes. <sighs> like that. Oh. All right. So that happens sometimes when it's rounded or just in general. So as you can see, one is a little bit, especially on this side, rounded. If these didn't have the general shape, we wouldn't have been able to take it off without vice grips. So it's nice. Sometimes they're literally just a circle. <laughs> That will be bad, but uh, and it looks like the right part. I'll just quickly explain how that happens. So, for a hex, obviously this isn't the right size because that's not what this is for. Um, but if you're using like a regular combination wrench, you have two sides. One with um, it's usually a 12 point, um, whereas a hex obviously has six, and so you can put it in on in a couple of different directions and an open end which only has two but when you only have two you've only got that little tiny bit of surface area like points of contact and what can happen is as you're turning the edges get rounded off because you know it's just a little bit of metal um, same with these because it's not like a hex like a socket like this so you see there's a lot more points of contact, like it basically just sits right along the edge versus just the tips. Insert random joke there. Okay. So as you can see, there's not really a lot of contact anywhere. <laughs> and then try the open end side. Try it on the most rounded side and see how that goes. So like there. Can you even put it on? <laughs> That's why there was a... Uh a little so maybe it's bent as well well yeah as as you um as the because the metal doesn't just like dissolve it just smears it smears off yeah so yeah see it's bent you can't even get it on that's why i was having issue with even putting it on sometimes and, and when you try yeah. it like this yeah when you're when you're underneath the, car. the recipe for making it's completely round yeah Filters right, right there. Yeah. So go ahead. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So now we're just gonna twist it. You just want to be careful because the the oil is gonna spill out a little bit. Maybe it's too slow to get it out, but it's fine. Really it's not nearly as bad when they're on the side. It usually drips out quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. So there but, you go. Uh, so yeah, and then just wipe up as much of the old oil as you can, just so it, you know less contamination later. Right. So sometimes what I like to do, especially if you're not changing the oil particularly often, is do a, um, is run like an extra little bit of oil through before you close it up. Uh, that'll just clean out the rest that's sitting at the bottom of the pan. We have a handy dandy hot sauce container here. For it was cleaned before and this is a fresh oil, so I know how much oil I'm putting in. And it's easier to pour. It's easier to pour, exactly. So yeah. it's getting a little bit lighter as well. Okay. It speeds up the process so it doesn't just drip drip forever. So you can see now the oil is basically just pretty much as clean as you're going to get it. Get in? Yep. Okay. You can wait till it drains if you really want, but otherwise... Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah, and I would just do it till it's finger tight, because yeah. if you end up adding too much oil by some fluke, you can just loosen it again. Okay, so now we're just gonna put a little bit on our finger. Okay, we're gonna put a little on our finger. Which is nice to have that squeeze button for, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And then just run it around the rim. You only need a very small amount. Um, extra doesn't really matter. 
And then sometimes I like to put a little bit just a lot, or you don't have to do it with your finger, but oh, just like okay. pour, in pour it in. Since it's going straight up, it's a little bit easier. And then in the middle, I just like to do that just for the sake of that good? posterity. Yeah, that's fine. So when you're putting in a filter, it's got some instructions um, on how many turns. Yeah, so it's after the seal touches the bit of like the actual face, um, you go three quarter turn. Okay. But um, since you can't see it most of the time, it's just so it's snug. You don't want it like tight because you want to that then it will never come off. So it's hit now, and now we're gonna go three quarters of a turn around. Three quarters, so. That's about, that's about a third, yeah. Is that good? Uh, one more turn. Yeah, I usually look at where, like, one mark on it, and oh, wait until that mark right. is three quarters of the way around. You could probably do it, like, a tiny bit more if you want, just to be safe, that's good. Okay. But you don't want it to be, like, so tight. Right. That's fine. Okay. So now we're back to why I loosened this, and that's just so um, it's got a little bit of airflow, so it it'll drain from the top of the engine um, through the case to the bottom faster, so it's not just like pooling up in here and then spilling other places. And also, if it's if it's going really slowly, you'll check the dipstick and then you'll stop. Mm. Um, come back later the next day check the dipstick again and you'll find, oh, I massively overfilled this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to leave it just up a little bit. So before we put the oil in, it's uh, 5W20. So we're putting synthetic in because it doesn't do too many oil changes in a year because it doesn't drive that much and it's longer lasting. It's also just better in general. It's nicer during the winter time, I find. Yes, in the winter it's good as well because although winter oil is winter, mm -hmm. it's to minus 18. It'll be fine for normal operating temperatures and then the viscosity will just like shoot up when it gets below minus 18 for most of them. Um, I think it's like minus 40 or something that most of the synthetics end up spiking at. So that's way better for this climate. Mm -hmm. So after letting it sit for a minute, um, so we're going to push this or take this out, clean it, put it back in. Okay. Doing this with one hand. Yes, please. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. All right, all the way in, not just part way in, that messes up your reading, and so many people do that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll leave it for a little bit so that the oil actually can go down to the bottom of the engine. And so we're gonna quickly check the oil level before adding any more. I don't know if you guys can see that with the light right now. No, but anyway, you can kind of see it's in this safe zone here. Oh, there, my thumb made it work better. It's right about there. So, for a guess, that's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. um, we, you can leave it there. Normally, I like to be on the safe side and add it kind of to the top. And then if it does leak, you've got... Ready? Yeah. Whenever you're checking the oil level, make sure you wipe it off before putting it back in or else it might mess up the level all next time. So the last little bit's probably maybe two cups at most. So we're just going to finish it off with a little tiny bottle. Uh, not all, not all of it, but usually you go kind of slowly in steps. Um, but again, it was probably about two cups. So when we check it, that should be fine. If not, that's should why we didn't time. tighten the drain club yet. Drain plug, not club. <laughs> so it's about. Sorry, I'll use my thumb again. So it's about halfway. Um, you can probably top it up with the rest of the bottle. If you want to have a little bit more, that's fine too. It's up to you. What, what is the good thing? Um, it's fine where it is. Uh, if you want to finish up the little bottle, um, then it's just in there. Yeah. 
because it's kind of an awkward amount of oil. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, go ahead, you can close it up. So we left it about halfway. Uh, Danish will probably check it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, see where it's at, or just after we've run it, because we're gonna also quickly check his transmission fluid since the car is like 10 years old now. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, we, you'll be able to see if he overfilled it or not. We're gonna tighten up the bolt before I forget. So you don't want to wrench it, but you do want it like snug. Uh, or else it'll never come off and you'll round the head again. It's not much more. That's probably good there. Sweet. So now we're just gonna put the oil back in here. I'm gonna hold it for him. Yeah. So <laughs> um, come this way. my hand may be covered in oil. Uh, it's, and when you do add more oil, sometimes you have to worry about this overfilling. Right. Like when you're running it through, but we didn't. We only put like an extra. Right. And these ones in. usually have a little bit more space than what they say. So this one is exactly. a five liter bottle, but it still will take, I would say, half a liter more. Exactly. And then after we have done filling this up, we'll just lock it up and deliver it to Canadian Tire because cool. they will deliver. They will recycle it for free for us. I didn't know that. See. Learning new things every day. <laughs> um, yeah, normally I just take it to the recycling place because that's just as close. Well, it used to be just as close, but now it's a good thing to know because I don't live near a recycling place. Right. The dump will also take it, um, I think. They usually have like a chemical disposal area. Oh, okay. Uh, same with all the other fluids as well. Keep them separate. They don't like it when you mix them. Uh, I see. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, good to go. All good to go. And it doesn't have to be in the container. You can actually put it in the milk container if you like. Because as long as it's in one container, they are good <laughs> to, they'll, they'll have you take it. So. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, I found that as well. There's some exceptions, but regardless, yeah. If you have like a jerry can and you're taking gas somewhere, don't leave it in the jerry can, take it in something else so you don't have to buy a new jerry can every time. Before we end the video, we're just going to quickly run through how to check your other fluids. Explain what this is and what level should this liquid be at. Okay, so um, it's a little bit low, your coolant, sorry that's what the symbols are usually different, but it's basically almost always the same. Two that you might get confused are the windshield washer fluid and the coolant. Obviously, if there's like a spray thing, it's your windshield washer fluid. And you don't really want them in the wrong place because this is right. ethanol and this is coolant and you don't want your car burning itself or a greasy film on your windshield. Right. People have done it. Um, it's either orange or green. Um, but yeah, you want to fill it up to the add. So when you're replacing it, you want like a um, a 50 like a premix. Mm -hmm. So it's 50/50. It'll keep the same concentration as is already in your radiator. Okay. Uh, you can also get like pure um, ethylene glycol, which is the coolant, and you mix it with like uh, demineralized water, and that's how you get like. 70 30 or whatever ratio you actually want in the car depending on what temperature it is okay. in the so environment best, so best for this car would be a 50 50. uh well to to top it up yes okay. um ideally for the car itself in in our climate mm -hmm. considering it goes down to like minus 40 sometimes uh 70 30 is basically the best right. or somewhere around 70 30. okay um then you're, you never have to worry about it just freezing inside your engine block. Right. So what next one, what is this one? And uh, So this is power steering fluid. Um, try not to break anything. <laughs> this one's also, it's kind of down on the min line. I don't think you can see that. I can't even really see that. But anyway, um, yeah, you just want to periodically check to make sure they're filled. Over here is the brake fluid. This one's more important than the others, uh, just because it helps you stop. Uh, 
considering how long you've had the car, you could have the fluid like changed. Okay. Uh, it's usually kind of expensive though, and sometimes they'll just like take a um, a turkey baster type thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then pull it out and then refill the top and then the rest that's in the lines isn't actually changed. So if, if you're gonna get it done somewhere, they're gonna charge you the same regardless. So just make sure it's like a full flush. Okay. Um, and that one, again, there's no real fill line. I'm pretty sure it's fine. Okay. So we started the car, we're running it for a little bit. We're just gonna double check the transmission fluid because we haven't done that in a while or Danish hasn't. Yeah. Yep, you're going. Okay. Hold it as level as you can. It looks like you can add a little bit more. I think it's kind of at the cold temperature. Mm. We've been running it for about five minutes though. Um, it's hard to judge though. It looks clean. Mm -hmm. So that's good, obviously, yeah. one of your last services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, got it? So I think you're okay. For well, thanks for watching. That's it. We're just going to lower the car down now. Um, Thanks, Danish, for showing us your car. Yeah, thank you for your help. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, give it a like, share it with your friends. The more interest, the uh, more of a priority we'll give editing and uploading stuff, because right now, eh. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Make sure you subscribe if you actually want to subscribe. I think it's over there. Like, subscribe. Um, if you guys want to be uh, following along, I think there's a bell to notify you. I find notifications horribly annoying, so I don't push the bell, but push the subscribe and then we'll actually uh, come up in your... I don't know. Actually, maybe not. YouTube is crazy these days. So, whatever time of day it is, have a good that time of day. And I'll see you guys next time. Or I won't, because I'm looking at a camera right now, and you're looking at me talking to a camera. Anyway, see ya. There weren't many bloopers in this episode, but stick around to check those out. You better. <laughs> I want some music in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three, one and three quarter turns. I don't know why it's written in reverse. Three quarter and one turn. Oh no, I see. Three quarter to one. Ah, man, this is this is some poor writing compared to the others. Anyway, it was recording. I paused it. That was dumb. It's good to leave it. Just pop it a bit. Ooh. Nicely done. Me. <laughs> um, the other thing we didn't mention before, or I'll insert this at a random point so it doesn't matter. So before we put the oil in, it's uh, 5W20, which we've already bought. Sometimes they'll just like take a... Um, Mister type thing? Oh, you don't have to take it off. Oh no, I don't. Okay, yeah, this is in the way. I get that. Don't want an elbow full of oil. Yeah. I have done that. Oh, that's not like where's the camera? So, hopefully, you guys. My hands everywhere. I don't know what to do with them. I wouldn't say they're instructional videos, it's more just for your entertainment. So you can either enjoy watching us screw up terribly or um, be successful. Or just, you're just really bored and staring at your computer blankly and questioning the meaning of life. And if it's worthwhile, if you're having these thoughts, please call the number below. Moving on. Um, you should really write down what I'm supposed to say because I get sidetracked every time. Let's try it again. <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying. Slowly, slowly dying. Let's just start again. 
All right, take 71. If you guys enjoy it, great. If not, it's there. So deal with it. Great. The more time I take, the more editing I have to do, which is, of course, my favorite thing in the world. <laughs>